didn't see it there. What are phenols? <laughs> you probably never thought that was an important question. But today we're going to find out all the important things you can do with phenols. Phenols are everywhere. But what is a phenol? We can find the answer in cyberspace. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, phenols are a family of organic compounds characterized by a hydroxyl group attached to a carbon atom that is part of an aromatic ring. Besides serving as the generic name for the entire family, the term phenol is also the specific name for its simplest member, benzene, also known as benzenol, or carbolic acid. In the 1800s, you probably wouldn't have wanted to go to a hospital. You wouldn't have liked the smell, and you'd have probably left more sick than you came in, because hospital disease, an infection that incurred when surgeons cut people open without washing their hands or changing sheets between patients. Of course, back then, they didn't really know why people got sick. In the early 1860s, a French scientist, Louis Pasteur, began doing experiments to find what he called germs, tiny animals that couldn't be seen. Across the English Channel, Joseph Lister, a doctor working in London, read Pasteur's paper and agreed with what it said. Pasteur blamed germs for causing sickness, which is basically how we still do it. Lister found a chemical that he could use to kill germs if they existed, his chemical carbolic acid or phenol. He could make it out of coal tar, a sludge left over from producing coal gas which was used to run lamps all over London. Lister tested out his chemical on several patients, and it worked. Eventually he had a water formula for cleaning hands and wounds, a paste for putting on bandages, and a machine that misted the air with phenol. Lister had invented the first antiseptic, and modern antiseptics are still phenols, just in forms that are less irritating to the skin. And now we have Listerine! We now know that phenols destroy bacterial cells by damaging their inner cell membranes. Phenols penetrate the membrane and cause cytoplasm to leak out. Soon after Lister, right around the turn of the 19th century, another scientist made another exciting discovery about phenols. Leo Beikland was a Belgian immigrant who came to New York to find his fortune. And he did, by inventing Villoc's photographic paper, which he sold to Kaodak for $750,000. Beikland used the money to finance his next chemical challenge. He wanted to create a replacement for the shellac that was used as an insulator in the electrical industry. Natural shellac comes from bugs, and there weren't enough to keep up with demand. Beikland worked for five years attempting to combine phenol with formaldehyde, a reaction which yielded a hard material but couldn't be controlled. In 1909, he announced his success. He invented a product he called Bakelite, named for himself, which could be cheaply made by a machine he called a Bakelizer, also named for himself. It was hard but not too brittle, and a better electrical insulator than any material currently in use, including shellac. Phenol formaldehyde resins like Bakelite are formed when a hydrogen carbon bond in the aromatic ring structure is replaced by a bond between the carbon in the ring and the carbon in formaldehyde. This forms a monomer that can randomly cross-link itself to other monomers. Sounds like plastic, dude. I know, that's right. Bakelite was the first polymer that we now call plastic. That's pretty neat. What else does phenol do? I'm glad you asked. Phenol is a component of most of the spices in your kitchen, like vanilla, thyme, and nutmeg. Phenol is also a part of lignin, the chemical that makes wood hard. In fact, most of the vanilla flavoring that we have today comes from wood. Chemists can take the lignin molecule and cut off the phenol part and what we get is exactly the same molecule that we have in vanilla. And that's what went into this cream soda. Yum! Phenol sure tastes good. Ugh! I'm getting a headache. That's too bad. I'll get you some aspirin. That's a phenol too. Wow, that was a lot of exciting information about phenols. I know. Today we learned about how phenols are a part of antiseptics, plastics, kitchen spices, and medicines. That's radical. I know. 
And to find out more, you can check out your local library and join us next time when we talk about deoxyribonucleic acids. Catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.